Motown Music is released under the U.S. record album Tamla Motown. As the first black-owned record company in the U.S., Tamla Motown was founded in Detroit in 1959 by Barry Gordy and was import important in popularizing soul music, producing artists such as The Temptations, Stevie Wonder, and Marvin Gaye. The Temptations were the most definitive male vocal group ever to emerge out of Motown. Their distinct harmonies and flashy wardrobe highly influenced R&B and soul music. Five group members came together from two struggling vocal groups, The Primes and The Distance. Eddie Kendrick, Paul Williams, and Kel Osborne made up The Primes. They sang locally in their native Alabama, where they quickly found success locally. In 1961, The Primes planned to disband after Kel Osborne moved to California. But before they could, they were invited to join another group by Otis Williams. Williams, a member of The Distance, an already successful D Detroit group, was impressed with the group's vocal prowess and choreography skills. After a deal was made, he could conjoin the two groups. In 1961, Otis Williams, Paul Williams, Eddie Kendricks, Elbridge Bryant, and Malvin Franklin formed their group and took on the name The Elgins. Under that name, the group auditioned for Motown and Barry Gordy agreed to sign the group. However, before signing, he required the group to change its name because, because another group was using it. And so, the group changed their name to The Temptations. In 1962, The Temps recorded a handful of singles over the ensuing months, but only Dream Come True achieved any real commercial success. The Temps' fortune changed overnight when they recruited David Ruffin, who was a fan who aspired to be part of the group. Ruffin replaced Bryant and was fired after physically attacking Paul Williams over a heated argument. The group began working with the writer, with writer-producer Smokey Robinson. With Robinson at the helm, they returned with 20 top hits that year, including My Girl, Don't Look Back, and others. In 1966, Robinson wrote Get Ready, with Kendrick on the lead. However, it failed to achieve the top 20 list. Gordy replaced Robinson with producer Norman Whitfield, who requested to become the group's next writer. Whitfield produced Ain't Too Proud to Beg, with Ruffin on the lead. It became the next top hit single for the group and outperformed Get Ready. Whitfield assumed full production control and boldly established himself as the group's new writer. From there on out, nearly all of the singles produced were led by Ruffin, until Ruffin failed to appear at a 1968 performance. The other four group members decided to fire him not only because of his absence, but also because of his rapid substance abuse. He was replaced by Dennis Edwards. In 1971, Kendricks exited for his solo career. Soon after, Paul Williams left the group as well. The remaining trio recruited Damon Harris and Richard Street. The group produced a brilliant number one signal, single, Papa Was a Rolling Stone, in 1972, and hit the charts regularly. Harris eventually exited the group and was replaced by Glenn Leonard. The Temps produced their last and final album for Motown, The Temptations Do The Temptations. In 1982, The Temps were reunited a final time for their album, Reunion. In the years that followed, The, the Temptations continued touring and recording. By the time the 1990s rolled around, the group was essentially an oldies act. The intervening years was marked by tragedy as Ruffin died in 1991 after overdosing on cocaine. Kendricks died at, at the age of 55 of lung cancer, and Franklin passed away after suffering a brain seizure in 1995. Having had 13 gold, 6 platinum albums, and 37 top 40 singles, The Temptations remained unparalleled. Stevie Wonder, born Stevelyn Hardaway Judkins on May 13, 1950, in Saginaw, Michigan, became blind as a result of receiving too much, too much oxygen in the incubator as a pre premature baby. Even with this disadvantage, Stevie Wonder still managed to show an early gift for music. 
first with a church choir in Detroit, Michigan, where he and his family had moved to when he was four years old, and later with the harmonica, piano, and drums, all of which he taught himself before age 10. Stevie Wonder faced the difficulty of staying relevant as a musician as he grew from boy to man. In 1971, Wonder, who had begun writing his own music, negotiated a new contract with Motown that gave him almost total control over his records and greatly increased his royalty rate. As the 1970s unfolded, Stevie Wonder went through an unrivaled period of production. Over the course of four standing albums, Talking Book in 1972, Inner Visions in 1973, Fulfilling This's first finale in 1974, and Songs in the Key of Life in 1976, Wonder created some of the most unforgettable songs in popular music history. The collection included a number of hugely popular singles, including Living in the City, Boogie on a Reggae Woman, and Isn't She Lovely, leading Wonder to the capturing of 15 Grammy Awards during the decade. Among Wonder's works are singles such as Superstition, Sir Duke, and You Are the Sunshine of My Life. Wonder has recorded more than 30 U.S. Top 10 hits and received 22 Grammy Awards, the most ever awarded to a male solo artist, and has sold over 100 million albums and singles, making him one of the top 60 best-selling music artists. In 2008, Billboard magazine released a list of Hot 100 all-time top artists to celebrate the U.S. singles charts, 50th anniversary, with Wonder at number 5. By those incredibly high standards, the 1980s weren't nearly as successful for Wonder. Still, he proved to be a huge musical force, creating a collection of hits that included the soundtrack single, I Just Called to Say I Love You, for the Gene Wilder film, The Woman in Red. Like so much of Wonder's work, the song cross racial lines, paving the way for it to become Motown's biggest international hit of all time. The single also won Wonder an Academy Award. In 1982, Wonder teamed up with Paul McCartney for the number one single, Ebony and Ivory. The 1980s also recognized Wonder, who's never been afraid to tackle social issues through his music, for his work as an activist for political causes including his 1980 campaign to make Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday a holiday in the United States. In 2009, Wonder was named a United Nations Messenger of Peace. Over the course of his long career, Wonder, who has been married twice and has seven children, has been honored with numerous awards. In 1989, Wonder was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. More recently, in 2009, he was recognized with the second Library of Congress Gershwin Prize for Popular Song. Wonder has been married twice to Motown singer-songwriter and frequent collaborator Sarita Wright from 1970 until their cooperative divorce in 1972, and in 2001 married fashion designer Kai Millard Morris. Wonder's seven children are from his second marriage and seven, several relationships. In August of 2012, Wonder filed for divorce from Kai Miller. They had been separated since October of 2009. Wonder currently resides in California and continues to make music. Marvin Gaye, nicknamed Prince of Soul, was an influential soul and R&B vocalist in the 1960s. He was born on April 2, 1939 in Washington, D.C. and was the second of three children born to Marvin Gaye Sr., a minister of a local church. Raised under the strict control of his abusive father, Gaye found peace in music and began a singing career by singing in his church choir at the age of three. He continued singing in the choir until he graduated from high school and enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. Upon discharge, he returned home to Washington and began singing in a number of street corner doo-wop groups, eventually joining a to top local doo-wop group known as the Rainbows. The Rainbows attracted the attention of singer Harvey Fuqua when they released the si single. Fuqua recruited the group to become the latest edition of his backing ensemble, The Moon, the Moon Glows. While touring the Midwest, the group performed in Detroit, where Gay's talent and vocal range impressed producer Barry Gordy Jr. 
This was Gay's big break as he was signed into the legendary Motown label in 1961. Marvin Gaye started off as a session drummer for the Motown label and played on early hits by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. During his role as a session drummer, he met Barry Gordy's sister and soon married her in the late 1961. Gaye decided to start his own solo career. He established himself as a Sinatra-styled balladeer determined to become successful without becoming mainstream. His first early singles failed and so Gay turned to a new style of music, red hot rhythm and blues. He produced Hitchhike and Can I Get a Witness, both reaching the top 30 list. Over the next 10 years, working with nearly every producer at Motown, he enjoyed over 20 big hits. He even went on to create a collection of duets with Mary Wells, Motown's first female star, delivering a number of hit singles together, including Once Upon a Time, and What's the Matter with You, Baby? However, Gay's greatest duets were with singer Tammy Terrell. The duo created some of the greatest love songs ever to emerge from Motown. Songs like Ain't No Mountain High Enough, You're All I Need to Get By, and Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing became s sensational in the music industry. In 1967, their promising career came to an abrupt halt when Terrell collapsed in Gay's arms while in concert. She was diagnosed with a brain tumor. They continued their singing career together until Terrell passed away in 1970, devastating Gay, who swore never to partner with another female vocalist and threatened to abandon the stage for good. Gay transitioned into a new phase of his singing career. He became one of the first Motown artists to gain complete artistic control of his records and started writing songs with a clear and definite message. In 1970, inspired by escalating violence and political unrest over the Vietnam War, Gay created the landmark album, What's Going On? What's Going On was a masterpiece that brought Gay's deeply held spiritual beliefs forward and explored issues ranging from poverty and discrimination to the environment drug abuse and war. The album deviated from the true Motown formula and created new audiences which paved the way for other Motown artists like Stevie Wonder. It even was critically acclaimed winning the Rolling Stone Album of the Year award. We don't need to escalate. See, war is not the Gay revolutionized Motown by loosening the reins of other artists to also take command of their own destinies. Gay's lyrical outlook shifted from a political one to a more sensual one. In 1973, he wrote Let's Get It On, one of the most sexually charged albums ever recorded. At home, Gay's marriage grew restless and his more personal album's completion was delayed when Anna Gordy filed for divorce in 1975. The dissolution of his marriage threw Gay into a tailspin, and he spent much of the mid-70s in divorce court. His song, Here My Dear, expressed his rocky relationship with his wife, Anna Gay. Gay eventually married Janice Hunter. Due to tax pressures, Gay fled to Europe to record his 1981 release, In Our Lifetime, which concentrated on his philosophies of love, art, and death. The next year, he left Motown and signed up with Columbia Records. His cocaine addiction developed further and had to battle it in order to begin to work on his last album, Midnight Love. The lead single from that album, Sexual Healing, became a huge comeback hit and earned him his first two Grammy Awards and an American Music Award. However, Gay's comeback was met at an increased cocaine addiction and depression. He returned home to the U.S. where he stayed with his parents to try and regain control of his life. Finally, on the afternoon of April 1st, 1984, one day before his 45th birthday, Gay was shot and killed by his father in the aftermath of a heated argument. To this day, Marvin Gaye is considered to be one of the most gifted, visionary, and enduring talents ever launched by Motown. Come on, talk to me, you can see what's going on.